So notice that this billing structure doesn't tie out exactly to my, my process of the job because I haven't started it. I don't know, I don't know how much it's going to take. And I know the 10,000 upfront I want before I start the job to lock in the client as well as to get the materials that I need to start, even though I haven't worked on anything. And that's where, of course, we get in this difference between the, the revenue recognition and the billing that's going to be taking uh, place. Now, when we come up with a billing schedule, note that you might have a hard billing schedule in a company. You might say, hey, look, I, I we shook hands and I want to make it. I don't want you to think that I'm messing up doing anything funny on the billing schedule. So I'm going to I'm going to be tied to the billing schedule, even if my costs differ as I go, because that's how I do things. Or you might say, hey, look, this is just an estimate. This is usually in a construction for government projects or something. We're like, yeah, it's an estimate. It's probably low. No, it's not low, but then it'll be way low, right? Because then the estimates will go up and it's like, oh, whoops, it cost $500,000 or something. And we had to increase the billing rate, right? You might have a flexible, a flexible billing rate. But for our purposes, I'm going to, I'm going to, and I'm going to make it a fixed billing amount here and say we're, we're locked into the billing for what it is, even though our estimates uh, could, could, we don't know what's actually going to happen as the job goes forward in terms of our actual costs until we actually incur the costs, right? So at, at this point in time, we can make the estimate and then we'll collect that month one amount. So let's go ahead and go over here and I'm going to go to, this is our second project. So I'm going to make a new project. I'll say, just call it project number two now. So I'm just going to say project two, generic project number two. I'm going to say new project, project, project number two. It's going to be not tied to, it could be tied to the same customer, but I'm going to say it's tied to customer two, right? Customer two, new project. And I'm, this is going to happen actually at the beginning of 2025. So I'm going to say an 010125 is the start date. It's in progress. Okay. So now we have a, a new pro new project number two in place. We're going to make an estimate for that project. So I'll hit the drop down. We'll make an estimate. And I'm going to say that's for project number two. And we're going to say then this happens start. I'm just going to start at the beginning of the year this time. 010125 and we'll make our little estimate down below same way that we did before with the generic categories of materials labor and overhead now in practice obviously you might have a whole different kinds of material and you know labor might go through payroll or contractors however you're going to account for that and overhead and whatnot but they would all be categorized into generally these categories of material labor and overhead usually when you're making something right so materials i'm just going to give the generic category of materials according to our estimate was forty thousand. so i'll say forty thousand, and i'm going to make a new class which is kind of redundant because we already have the project but we know that the classes will break out at least the income statement by column which is quite useful and in this case it might give us some more detail on the balance sheet side too. So I'm gonna say class, class number two or job two. So, so I can indicate, I wanna be able to indicate that this is different than the project thing that we're using in terms of tools. That's why I'm trying to name it a little bit differently. So then we're gonna say this is gonna be next labor. And that we said was for 30,000. All right, 30,000. And I'm gonna say this is class number two. And then we've got overhead. And this is gonna be for, we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna say the overhead is 6923, all right? 6923. And that's gonna be for class number two. And then I'm going to put the markup in a separate line item so that the client can see the actual costs and the markup. The other way you could do it is to mark up each of the line items by like the 30% markup. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make up another item here, which I'm just going to call the markup. So I'm going to say it could be a non-inventory or a service item because we're not going to be tracking inventory. I'll just say service. 
I'm just gonna call it the markup. And so we'll copy that and we'll put it down here on the description. It's gonna be going once again to the sales of product because we are gonna be making something here and we'll say save it and close it. So there is it and that's gonna be our other, what did we say, 2377. So we'll say, okay, that's gonna be uh, 23077. So that should add up to the 100,000 total and this is gonna be job number two. So there we have it. So we'll record the estimate. The estimate's not gonna do anything to the actual financial statements. It's just going to uh, uh, give the estimate that we could provide, of course, to the client, and then go from that point if they accept the estimate. So we're gonna say save and close, and then we can track the estimate over in the sales tab by going to the estimates or to the customers, customer number two, and there's gonna be our estimate for the second project. What we expect to be happening from this point forward is that we can use that estimate to basically create invoices uh, as we go into the future. Now, nothing has been recorded to the financial statements yet. We have the same familiar problem over here that we saw last time in that we're gonna start billing the 10,000 before we did any work on it. And that means that uh, the billing could be used with an invoice, which would be great. That's what we did last time because that facilitates the collection process easier, most likely, but it causes that revenue recognition issue because we haven't actually done the work to earn the 10,000. So then we'll deal with a couple different options. We might deal with that problem with next time.